What is up, Breakthrough Success listeners? Mark Bird, the podcasting coach here. And a very interesting thing is that if you've ever heard of like entrepreneurs who like they had some kind of like dyslexia or like they dropped out of college, uh, you do see that people who do face adversity do pursue that path towards entrepreneurship. And our guest has actually done a ton of research into how people who were bullied at younger ages uh, were able to rise above and use that adversity to their advantage, become successful entrepreneurs. So uh, we're going to be talking about some of that research and some different insights we can get from that in this episode. Our guest who joins us today, he is the author of Adversity to Advantage, How to Overcome Bullying and Find Entrepreneurial Success. He has spent his time interviewing and researching a group of highly diverse and successful entrepreneurs, all of whom were bullied in adolescence in an effort to uncover how these entrepreneurs were able to leverage the raw emotion and lessons learned from their experiences to grow as both personal and professional successes. Our guest who joins us for this episode is none other than Randy Ginsberg. Randy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mark. I'm very happy to be here. Randy, I'm so happy to have you on Breakthrough Success. And I think it's a really fascinating topic, like entrepreneurship. I mean, there is a lot of adversity in entrepreneurship. And uh, when you, we are talking about a heavy topic like bullying, there is a lot of adversity you have to overcome in that scenario. So I'm wondering what really set you on your journey to find the crossroads uh, between those two destinations. Yeah, so it all started with my own personal journey growing up. I grew up in a small um, suburb of New York City and home to a lot of type A personalities. And I was a bit different, definitely in appearance. I was a late bloomer. I had long, greasy, blonde hair, buck teeth, um, acne. I dressed a little different. And for all those reasons, um, I was bullied. And that definitely took a profound toll on my mental and physical health. And at the same time, I'd also had this entrepreneurial spirit. I was always the hustler, grinder type of kid uh, whether it was door-to-door snow shoveling or lemonade stands that was like stuff when i was younger and then that ended up transitioning into some more serious endeavors such as buying and selling sneakers and making my own clothing which i did in high school and ended up turning into a pretty lucrative side hustle and finding that passion for entrepreneurship was actually what got me out of this hole in the bullying And so what I found was that this bullying was what actually fueled my fire, what gave me a chip on my shoulder and gave me this desire to prove myself in this work ethic. And I was curious to see if there were other entrepreneurs who were a lot more successful, who had already won through life and had scaled and sold companies, if this experience with bullying had shaped them as well. And so what I did is I went for the last year and a half, I interviewed a highly diverse and successful group of um, founders and self-starters and creative individuals, all who were bullied as kids, and just looked at the different similarities and differences in their stories and tried to find a connection between the two. And I mean, I know from interviewing people, like you learn so many things just by interviewing people, like hearing their stories, hearing the similarities and differences, something Randy pointed out earlier. I'm wondering if you could share what were some of the things that people had in common, like who were bullied, who became entrepreneurs, like were they fueled by like the people who were bullying them? It was like, I'm going to show you, or were there like some other things in there as well? Definitely. So I recently graduated from Syracuse University and I, one of the first forefront pieces of information that I found, actually one of my first interviews came from a woman named Ellen Delara. And Ellen is a social work professor at Syracuse, but she's also an author of this book, Bullying Scars. She's a psychologist and a researcher. And so in her book, Bullying Scars, which examines all of the different effects of bullying, both positive and negative throughout the course of um, an adolescent and adult's life, one of the chapters that did focus on the positives broke down this own study that she conducted. So this study, was 900 people aged 18 to 65, all different walks of life. So you had entrepreneurs, lawyers, doctors, but you also had service workers, fast food workers, just the whole spectrum. And what she found was that of the 900 people, nearly 50%, 47% of these people reported that bullying actually had a positive effect on their adult lives, which you traditionally would never think because bullying is always thought of to be bad and have these terrible effects, which it definitely can. But then at the same time, 50% of these people said that it actually 
um, benefited them. So the ways that they said that they benefited them, some of the biggest, one came in the form of resilience and independence. So just developing nerve and learning how to deal with adversity, which translates so much into entrepreneurship because it's such an ambiguous career. There's so much uncertainty, so much financial instability and insecurity, and you need to be able to take a thousand no's, a hundred no's, whatever it is, before you get a yes and keep getting back up every time that you've been um, knocked down. So that was one thing that was consistent across all of the entrepreneurs that I interviewed, just that ability to take pain, develop their nerve and deal with adversity. Um, another big thing was the idea of morality. So never wanting to treat someone the way that they had been treated. And that directly plays into leadership style and goes hand in hand with um, another benefit that people expressed was just increased emotional intelligence, which directly plays into, like I said, leadership style, but also hiring and firing, negotiation, just entrepreneurship is such a social profession and you deal with so many different people, so many different relationships all the time by being able to take what you've learned from some type of adversity, specifically bullying, and just give yourself a humanistic advantage and a way to connect with others and read others. Um, that was something really powerful across every entrepreneur who I interviewed, whose stories um, really set them apart. And then the last one was goal attainment. So the idea, like I just mentioned, to go improve yourself, that you, you're fueled by this fire and you have this chip on your shoulder. And for almost all these entrepreneurs, it was the same thing. They credit a lot of their success, they credit a lot of their drive and their motivation to whether if it's proving other people wrong, which at a younger age, a lot of these entrepreneurs said that that was their main goal, right? So our age, they were just out for, out for blood, right? They wanted to prove everyone wrong. Once they started to get older, they learned that they wanted to do it for themselves. But at the mm -hmm. same time, at the same time, all of it was still fueled, all their work drive, all their um, work ethic, everything was fueled by what had gone on in their past. So there were a lot of similarities across all of the stories. And that is a very important transition for people to make. And it doesn't matter if you were bullied or not bullied. It's an important transition to make from I will show you to I will do this for myself. Like it's one thing to like, you know, seek the external reward and like people like surround you like, oh, you were right. Or, oh, like you achieved this goal. We didn't think you were going to achieve. But then when it comes to like, I want to do this for me. And then it doesn't matter if you've got a million people in the stands or like no one. You just, you're just happy that you did it uh, for the sake that you wanted to do it. So that's a very important transition to make. Uh, I know like, I feel like we hit on this earlier with the like goal achievement because like a lot of entrepreneurs, they do set goals. Uh, so I feel like we hit on this a little bit, but I am wondering, like, it's not like everyone who gets bullied becomes a successful entrepreneur. It's just, you know, getting bullied helps with dealing with diversity and, you know, it's not the only path to entrepreneurship, but I'm wondering what separates people, like people who are bullied, like in the sense of like, they become entrepreneurs versus the people who get bullied, but they don't become entrepreneurs and it's continue to sulk, um, around that. Yeah, I think. Some of it does have to do with just who you're surrounded by. And frankly, it could even be who and what you're surrounded by. So if you have a great family and a support system and the rest of your life outside of that, you're fortunate enough to grow up in a um, fairly wealthy town, whatever it is, just some of those things can play factors into it. I think one of the biggest ones, and Ellen Delara talks about it in her book as well, is having that support system. So if you have, whether it's a family member or just one close friend or a guidance counselor or someone that you can speak to um, and that can kind of coach you through it and that you feel comfortable sharing with, that is a very powerful tool, not necessarily to go on and become an entrepreneur, but just to go and overcome the bullying itself. Because in my experience, I didn't tell my parents until I was 18 years old, right? Mm -hmm. So I was an only child. Um, I have a good relationship with my parents now. I didn't really at the time. And at the same time, I was embarrassed, right? I didn't want to tell them that all this was going on. And I just also- for, Just for context, how long was it happening? Like, is yeah, so it probably went on from around fifth grade towards fresh, end of freshman year of high school, beginning of sophomore year of high school. So it was a sizable um, time. But at the same time, I guess I'll add, when you think of bullying, you traditionally might think of isolation, the kids sitting alone at the lunch table, um, being physically picked on or whatever it may be. For me, I always had friends, you know, I was never the kid sitting 
alone at the lunch table. I was always very athletic. I played on all the sports teams and I was always surrounded by different people and different relationships. But at the same times, I was still was the one I was the scapegoat. I was the one bullied by those people and didn't have the courage to go and stand up to them. And a lot of times when you're younger, um, even if you have friends and they're witnessing it, they might be bystanders and they might just laugh along, but they won't intervene because when you're a kid, you don't want to intervene and then yeah. have the attention then be brought on to you. You know, it's a very weird time, especially in that middle school age. So for me, it was very interesting because I did have this core group of friends who I have grown up with and are, I'm still very close with, but at the same time, they witnessed this all going on and never really, I never really spoke to them about it and they never really asked about it or did anything. But going back to the parent thing, so I had these friends and I had one or two that I was able to um, vent to a bit, but I never told my parents. And I found out through this research that only 30% of kids who are bullied ever go and tell an adult. Mm. Which, or So that's a parent, a guidance counselor, a friend's parent, whatever it is. Um, they only go and tell, they only keep it inside, which is really detrimental. So my biggest piece of advice for anyone going through that, whether they want to become an entrepreneur, or they just want to go on to do something better with their lives, they want to get out of that hole, is to really try to find some type of support system, whether it's through therapy or just one close friend. I think the quality of those relationships is a lot more important than the quantity. Yeah, I mean, quality definitely beats quantity. And Randy brings up some really fantastic points. It's uh, It comes in all different types of forms. And it is based on who you surround with, like your support system that really helps you. And just this idea of like not telling people, I feel like we're in like this like man up culture where like, you know, don't really talk about the suffering or pain or anything like that that's going on. Just take it and uh, find a way to fix it yourself. I feel like a lot of people may be thinking that way, which is how some of the embarrassment can come. But I mean, Randy's already said it. I'm going to say it too. Just like be able to tell someone. I know some people aren't in that good of like support community groups. Like they got unlucky there, but there are like online groups. Uh, my Breakthrough Success Facebook group is not necessarily one of those types of things. It's more of like business. But if you really need an outlet and you can't find anything else, I'm happy to, you know, offer that suggestion but i mean it's a it's a really deep topic and it is fascinating how something that uh you hear about it and it is such a bad thing like we're not trying to say like if you get picked on you know you're going to be an entrepreneur we're not trying to say that at all but um it's just that ability to persevere and as randy says use that adversity as your advantage and then it's just something that builds up from there Exactly. And part of what you were saying, like you said, if anyone's going through it and they might not have the support group, on one hand, I wrote the book to find more people that were like me, you know? So even though I might have overcome it in the sense of right now, I'm in a better place, I wrote the book, I'm doing other entrepreneurial things, I have a job, but at the same time, things like this never truly go away. Even the biggest entrepreneurs, Elon Musk, um, Tom Ford, they still admit that certain aspects of their bullying never fade for them. So I'll give you an example. Tom Ford, one of the most famous fashion designers, filmmakers ever on every cover of every magazine and every interview. One, he's afraid of taking pictures still. He said he hates being in front of the camera. Two, he said if a group of eight-year-olds went up to him and kicked a soccer ball towards him and ran toward him, he'd fill with fear and anxiety, right? And this is one of the most famous wealthy, successful by any measure people in the world, but that never truly goes away. And that's the same with me and the same with every single um, other person that I spoke to. And so what part of the book was, was just building that community of entrepreneurs and just also people who are now a bit more comfortable. Because once I open up to you, right, you're a little bit more inclined to open up to me, regardless if we've met the first time or not. It's goes way deeper than your first introductory, introductory um, service level relationship once you let down your guard. So especially once you, you and this other person have went through um, the same thing. So when I was interviewing these entrepreneurs and these people, and even after, now that the books come out, we've gotten press and people have reached out to me, they hear my story and they're immediately more inclined to um, share theirs. And so that's really what part of the book is too, just opening up this community to, like you said, if anyone who's listening or anyone who goes on and reads a piece, an article or a piece of press, 
sees that and resonates with it that they're then comfortable speaking to myself or reaching out to maybe one of the other people that I wrote about too. We've got more great content coming up, but first we have a message from our sponsor who helps people to create a passive income driven lifestyle. So if you're wondering how to achieve that for yourself, my friend Rachel Harrison's son has you covered as she teaches people through her blog, YouTube channel and social networks, how you can generate passive income through low content publishing. She's one of the best low content publishers in the space and can help you use this strategy to generate the passive income that you want to generate. So we'll have links to her in the show notes so you can learn more, but you may want to consider her private coaching as well. She's a side hustle paradise speaker, and I certainly got a lot from our sessions together, which I'll be implementing in my strategy as well. So if you guys want more info on her, the links will be in the show notes. Anyways, let's jump right back into the episode. And I mean, you know, I, I did talk about my group. We mentioned like, you know, have like uh, some kind of online outlet if you don't have one uh, in person. Do you have an adversity to advantage Facebook group or anything like that online? If you don't, I mean, it's okay. But I mean, like, if you do like that is something I would really love to add to the show notes. Yeah, definitely. I don't have a group, but I do have my personal website. I do also do um, I'm starting up in February, actually, myself and an executive coach are doing an adversity to advantage mastermind coaching session where I talk about this framework in the book where I take all of the learnings that I found and put it into this framework that people can apply to their lives. And so we walk you through that and we do um, disc personality tests and assessment tests and communication behavioral tests and just try to help guide you through that. So that's another thing where we're bringing the community aspect and trying to bring people together and help them grow on top of each other. But I can get a bit into the framework if you want. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So basically the first half of the book is structured where I kind of just told you right now, I share my story. I give you a state of the current society on bullying and where we stand with that. But then the second part, each chapter is broken down to this framework called invent which is an acronym and it takes everything that I've learned from these entrepreneurs and just gives it to you digestible, quick, easy, and hopefully you can apply it to your own lives. So the first one is I, and it stands for established identity. So that identity is the core of us, right? It's the core of ourselves. What do we stand for? What do we believe in? What are we interested in? What do we want to be? And your identity is continuously evolving and your identity also in some instances may stay the same but it's important to figure out within yourself and identify what you want to be and what you want to stand for, because that's what you're going to put out into the world. And you need to have the confidence and you need to know the direction that you want to put out before people can accept you for what you are. So that's about that chapter is just about how all these entrepreneurs went from being bullied to finding this um, identity as an entrepreneur. Then the N is what I touched upon briefly before with resilience, developing your nerve. And that talks about Elon Musk, who said the chapter starts off with um, he, his one piece of advice for anyone who wants to start a business is he'd recommend having a high pain tolerance. And so that really kicks off the chapter and it just talks about all the different types of adversity and ways to develop your nerve. And then the V is visualize your goals. So that talks about goal setting, um, the law of attraction, manifestation, and just you could have the best idea in the world, but if you don't execute it properly, um, it's nothing. So it talks about that. Then the E is engage with others, and that brings in the emotional intelligence aspect, the humanistic aspect, negotiation, um, things like that, that we talked about in the Lara study, I'll discuss with the entrepreneurs I interviewed there. Then the N is embrace the now, and that part talks about just where we are digitally in our society. It's never been easier to start a podcast, start a business, start a Shopify. You know, we have so many tools at our disposal and a lot of them are free or very low barrier to entry um, financial wise. And so it's just talking about how you can take whatever interest or passion you have and use some of these tools, like some of the entrepreneurs who were bullied that I um, either interviewed or researched. And then that puts you on that path. And the T, which is one of my favorite chapters of the book, stands for, have you read the book, The Third Door? Or have you heard of it? No, I haven't. I feel like I should be reading all these books. <laughs> Third Door by Alex Benayan. Um, he's the youngest 
youngest best-selling author um, nationally. And this book really changed my life. And basically his idea, his own framework is called the third door framework. And it's a metaphor. So the third, the life is like a nightclub, right? You have the um, first door, you have the normal line where everyone waits and you can wait two hours to get in and go slow, but eventually you get in. Then you have the VIP door where all the celebrities and the influencers and the rich people with money get, people who want its money get um, let right in. And then you have the third door where the people who are unconventional and scrappy and risk takers, they'll sneak around the back or they'll climb through a window or they'll do something really um, outrageous, but like ballsy and that gets them to where they want to be and they kind of skip the line. And so what he found, and he interviewed so many amazing people from all different industries, um, one of them being Bill Gates, but he found how all these people got their like their first software sale or how Steven Spielberg got his foot at the door in a major production studio and all these different firsts that all the people that we've now known to be these huge successes are, he got to interview them and found all of their third door moments. So my last chapter, the T stands for take the third door and talks about how to build the confidence that's required to take that risk and find your own third door moment. Rand, yeah, I definitely love that framework. All the different stuff you mentioned is going to be in the show notes. One of the things that I do want to ask, though, is I feel like when it comes to like bullying, one of the things that happens is people get scarred by the incident. Like I feel like we all think of someone or a group of people, and I feel like just you listening to this right now, you could definitely think of someone wherever you're driving or if you're working out or whatever it is you're doing. I feel like you could think of someone or a group of people. And some people, they let these scars really affect them for like forever. And other people like let them go and just like, you know, just the name comes up sometimes. Uh, But I'm wondering if you could share with us, uh, how is it like, how can we, like, you know, we can't go back, we can't forget what happened, but how can we like not feel scarred or stagnant because of what happened? Yeah, definitely. Well, like I said, and the way you just mentioned too, it might, and it probably won't, certain things will never go, you know, like I'll remember certain things for the rest of my life. And that's probably going to continue. That being said, um, it's very important to train yourself to think resiliently and optimistically. And that's one, what will carry you through getting over that, getting over bullying, but also just anything else that you face. And so I share a couple studies in the book and just different tips and I can share one now. And so there's a psychologist named Suzanne Kobasa. And in 1979, she released this study on stress hardiness. Stress hardiness is basically the positive response to stressful situations and then the ability to minimize their negative effects. So kind of what you're talking about, right? And so she broke it down into the three C's. That's what her framework was called. The first C was challenge. So just viewing adversity as a challenge as something that you know that it's gonna come on and then it's kind of cliche, but it's kind of the idea of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That there's a light at the end of the tunnel, you'll get over that hump and that it can be used as a learning lesson as opposed to this paralyzing life-defining event. So that's the first C. Then the second C is commitment. So that talks about just making a commitment to something we're seeking and finding a purpose so that resilient people find like a balance between their dedication, um, their work, their relationships, their friends, their values, their religious ideology, right? Just dedicating yourself and your time to something meaningful. And this is something that Ellen DeLara found too. One of the best ways that people were able to get over bullying was actually by investing their time in something that was meaningful or that helped them give them purpose. And that's what I did for me, just investing my time in buying and selling sneakers and growing that business and taking classes at FIT and making my own clothing, I went from being the bully kid to now feeling like I was the kid, I was the sneaker kid, right? Everyone spoke to me about that. That's what I was known for. Teachers, parents, friends um, knew me for that. And that commitment actually helped me get, build the confidence to get out of that hole. And then the last one is personal control. And I think you hear this one the most, but that resilient people spend their time and their energy focusing on what's in their control. So there's so much stuff in the external environment that is unfortunately out of our control. And we all, myself included all the time, spend time worrying about it. But if you're able to just 
hone in and tune that out and focus on what you can control and making yourself a better person. You know, someone else is always going to have an opinion. Someone else is never going to like what you do. You can't please everyone. And the quicker that you realize that you're just going to focus on yourself and what's in your control and what you can make you better. Um, those are three ways that she's found and that a lot of people have applied to their own lives for the last 30, 50 years that have really helped them um, start to think resiliently. Randy, I really love that breakdown. I mean, it really just boils down to us being able to take control our, of our lives and really uh, set the path for ourselves instead of doing what other people want us to do or uh, feeling pressured to take on a certain persona that doesn't make you feel good. So I definitely love your breakdown. I feel like your insights were super spot on. You did mention a few links earlier. We'll throw those in the show notes, but Randy, I do want to thank you so much for coming on Breakthrough Success. This was such a great time. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I hope your listeners enjoy. <laughs>